I want the studio tonight to speak of Nigerian Youth Parliament, Honorable Ayodele John, the Speaker of Nigerian Youth Parliament, joining us to talk about the International Youth Day. Welcome to the studio this evening. No, thank you. Now, to, uh, talking about the Not So Young to Run Bill, mm -hmm. now that it has been passed by the National Assembly, what efforts is the Youth Parliament making towards ensuring that it is passed at the State Houses of Assembly? Yes. We want to use this medium to appreciate the International Assembly like we have done for passing this bill. And before now, we knew it is going to get to the stage of getting to the state, um, state houses of assembly. So we have made effort and we have been in 16 states um, as of assembly before to meet with the leadership okay. and explain to them the need for them to pass this bill. But now again, we have set up a committee of parliamentarians. We have three per state, which represents one per senatorial district and the state youth parliament to as a matter of urgency meet with the speakers and leadership of the national assembly for them to know the importance of passing this bill not only to the youth of nigeria but to the nation as a whole okay now in your opinion looking at nigerian youths how would you say how do you perceive the nigerian youths in taking up political of offices how would you say how interested are they in taking up political offices yes that's in your perspective Yes, in my perspective, I think the Nigerian youth are very ready and they are capable and credible enough to um, take off um, positions of responsibility either in politics or, and even in every facet of um, the economy to ensure that there is development. So we are adequately prepared and ready. Okay, now um, this particular bill, talking about the not too young to run bill, there have been different critics of this bill saying that the bill is largely elitist aimed, saying that the, el the elites would take it up and, you know, and use it as a means of pushing their words into political positions. How best do you think this can be handled? Yeah, thank you. And like we've always said that the not too young to run bill is not an end to itself. It's just a means to an end. Okay. Yes, as in it's just a process to kick. Uh, it's just to kickstart the process to absorb and I mean to allow the influx of youth that uh, into the political scene. But for you to have said, or for some people to have mm. said, okay, um, the elite is to take advantage. But don't you think that's a very strong point? Uh, yes, it's as a in possibility. We can see it happening in our society, like in our system of doing things. No, I can categorically tell you that people are more conscious of who their leaders are. So the days by which you just bring someone from nowhere and impose it on the people is gone. The people are more conscious. All right, now, st still looking at uh, the Nigerian youth and how we can really make use of this opportunity, how best do you think that the Nigerian youth can break the bond of money politics in Nigeria? Yeah, gradually, power is returning to the people. And the people are getting more conscious of this. So soon enough, we are sure that our democracy is going and in, in some times to come, as in very soon, I say, as in there will not be need for the money back. There will only be need for people to identify with your goals and objectives and ideas. And they are going to bring in their little stipends that is like it's done in every other scenario. Is yours getting to that point? Yes, we are already with getting to the point. With the rate of your poverty in Nigeria, with the rate of like, with our system in Nigeria, is yours really getting to that point? Yes, with the rate of, not of think poverty of money. in Nigeria, mm -hmm. I could recall the last election where people contributed money for um, our president, President Muhammad Buhari. So, like I said, it's a matter of consciousness. It's not giving all that you have. And some people will even go to the excess of giving all that you have. Once they believe in the personality and the credibility and the capability of the person they are projecting. Then you say it's a matter of consciousness. So that means yes. we really need to reorientate the youth. Yes, you really agree with me? That's one thing. That okay. Is, is the youth parliament doing anything to this effect, to this regard? reorientation like you know making the youth really understand that this is what we need to do to take up the political space in Nigeria. Yes, we have been doing that a lot as in when we came on board we've been advocates of uh, patriotism, we've been advocate of youth inclusion and we've been doing a lot of um, reorientation advocacy campaigns and in conjunction with the reorientation um, advocates of Nigeria ran okay. as in we've been able to reach out to some youth and we will still be doing more because our best is not enough yet. We have to reach out both to the youths that are educated and to the non-educated youths down there, I think wherever they might be, those that have jobs and those that 
do not have okay. problems. Yes. Okay. Now, um, as we begin to wrap up, how best do you think the youths in Nigeria can begin to speak with one voice? Because we have the, the Northern youth saying that, you know, recently there's been agitations in different regions in the country. How best do you think we can make the youths begin to speak in one voice? We should put aside our cultural differences, ethnicity, and all of that, and speak with one voice as Nigerians, like people who are really ready to take up the political space. Yes, we always have the issue of exuberance when we have the youth everywhere. But the fact still remains that this is, this should be properly channeled. And from our own hands, we have been trying to harness these resources to ensure that it is properly used for the development of the country. But while referring to some youth, some youth don't even have authority to talk about youth. We only have two statutory youth bodies in Nigeria. Okay. We are not saying others are not doing well, but mm -hmm. we have the Nigerian uh, National Youth Council of Nigeria and the Nigerian Youth Council who has the right to, let me say, speak on behalf of the youth. youth and okay. I have not seen both organizations. So any other organization um, is non-existent. Those are the two statutory. Yeah, we are not saying they are non-existent, but they might follow that non-governmental organization. Okay. And for these two organizations, I've, I've gone through the statement of the Youth Council in this position, and they are dedicated to the unity and sovereignty sanctity of Nigeria. We are nationalists. We believe I'm a Yoruba man. See mm -hmm. the way I'm dressed as a <laughs> yes, because I believe in the nation. The nation yeah. first, that loyalty should be to the nation. But with time, we are very sure that we'll come together and always speak with one voice. I hope we get to that point. Now, um, with the current clamor for restructuring in Nigeria, I want to get the position of the youth coming from your end. What's the position of, you, of the youths as regards restructuring in Nigeria? Yes, thank you. We are not happy with the way things are going, although I can say that what is happening is a real blessing to Nigeria because it has made us to think um, in the right direction, which we ought to have been thinking for the past 30 years, that we have dedicated all that we have into the oil sector. But, um, um, okay, let me say, let me say mm -hmm. at this point that um, for us in the Nigerian Youth Parliament, it is important, very important that um, we support um, the investment of, um, of the country into the non-oil sector for us to be able to move on. It is very important that we do come together as one, as a body of youth. And and regarding the restructuring, mm -hmm. I mean, hardly would you see any nation that will come together with its federation state to come to the federal level to get finance. I mean, and that is why we are saying from our own position as yeah. Nigerian youth that it is better mm -hmm. for us to restructure what we have, that mm -hmm. individuals can go and just determine their own prosperity and just taxes go to the federal. It is even more convenient for the federal government because yeah. they just sit down there and get taxed mm -hmm. and they don't get involved in what they shouldn't get involved in. But we need more expertise on this. We need more knowledge on this. And by our next sitting, we'll be bringing experts. We'll be bringing people that are knowledgeable so that we can have an informed position, okay. an knowledgeable position on this. And that is what the parliament does. We always come together. We get positions, I mean, we get knowledge, as an adequate knowledge on an, on an issue, issue, and yeah. we debate it okay. um, as in objectively and in a non-partisan way, and we come up with a resolution which we will always stand by. All right. Now, what will be your message to the Nigerian youth today? Because like you said, from your standpoint, Nigerian youth are ready to take up political positions. Yes. Okay. So what would be your message, general message now? As regards, you know, taking up political positions, getting ready to do, you know, to go there and do big things. Because, like you mentioned earlier, I pointed, I picked out the fact that I said, wherever you find youth, you find youthful exuberance. Mm -hmm. How are we not, you know, so sure that when we take up those offices, it's going to be something else? So, what will be your message to Nigerian youth today? Yes, my message to the Nigerian youth is that. Like we observed that um, so many of us have been basking in the fire of the passage of the not too young to <laughs> yeah. one. And, and like I said, it is not at hand, it is a means to at hand. hand. We yeah. ne really need to coordinate ourselves. That is the first thing. We really need to know what we want for this nation. And we really need to project people that could really take us to that desired destination. And for us to project such people, such people have to go back to their local constituency identify with the people, get registered, join the political party. 
as in not until you get past the, the um, standard of assembly then mm -hmm. you have to be a member of a political party to contest so for you to make a change you have to be in the system and for us to be in the system we have to come together we have the largest demographic composition and one thing that our advice was that we have to stay out of um, a speeches or speeches that are capable of destroying the unity of our country nigeria because we believe that together we can work things out. Yeah, that reminds yeah. me of something you said during the meeting, your meeting today. You talked yeah. about something about hate speech. Can you just you know, throw more light on that as a fallout from your meeting? Yes, as in we have been seeing a lot of that. So many people declaring kingdoms and um, different, <laughs> different ethnic nations out yeah. of Nigeria. And they have been going away with it. But there should be stronger punitive measures against this, as okay. in... And if you want, we are not against self-determination, but you do it in the proper way. Yeah. As in Section 9, Subsection 3 of the Nigerian Constitution allows the alteration of the Constitution and all that. So, mm -hmm. But he specifies ways by which this can be done. So within those contests, as in we should guide all our utterances and what we do to be able to match or to fall in into constitutional bounds or boundaries. So... Uh, who advised them that let us shun this instead of us talking about uh, this man is Igbo, this man let us talk about ways by which we can develop technology that the whole world will patronize let us talk about ways by which we can do things that will move nigeria out of this quagmire we have to mm -hmm. and height whereby other nations in the world will always envy us okay now you also mentioned something from that meeting you said you talked about the federal government uh, calling a state of emergency in yes. some sectors can you just elaborate briefly on that as we wrap up yes as in looking at what we have as in sometimes i say government has no business in business you have to provide a an environment for businesses to thrive and for um individuals or the private sector to come in and that's why we're advocating that there should be good power supply. If there's a good power supply, then most of our industry function, it takes millions of years. Yeah. So those are the industrialization and agriculture drives every nation. And from what we are seeing, it's not working. So mm -hmm.